How many of you are bound by chains? I had no idea that Gary was going to be here this morning. I'm thankful that he is because I hope, brother, you got a key for this. <laughs> I must say, this is the first time I've ever been in these. <laughs> I've actually put these on a lot of folks in my career, but I've never actually wore them because I didn't want to be bound by them. How many of us have chains and we'd like to be set free? Do you know each and every day, we as Christians, we walk around chained by the past, chained by past hurts or Maybe things that we have done that we thought we could never be forgiven for. But this morning I'm here to tell you that God has promised us to be chain free. I gave you that verse this morning. It's found in Nehemiah chapter 8. In verse number 10. And it says, For the joy of the Lord is my strength. How many of you want that this morning? You actually, as a believer in Jesus Christ, have access to that. How many of you would like to have it this morning? How many of you would like to have access to it? How many of you would like to actually put it into practice that God can release those chains and let them go free? Amen. You see, for He's given the key. Gary, I actually got one of these. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're going to be chained up, you need to know where the key's at. Amen, church? Amen. You see, we have the key, but we don't use it. And our key is found in the Lord. Now let's see if I can remember how to do this, Lord. <laughs> Goes in there like that. And it turns out. Isn't it great when the Lord provides for us the key? And He can release the change and take the chains off. And you know, He, he wants to do that in each and every one of our lives. Just to let go of the chains. Do you want that this morning? Amen, church? If you'll turn in your Bible with me, our text this morning is actually found... <coughs> In Philippians. Chapter 4. One of the... I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I found this little humorous antidote to go with the message this morning. And it was a young boy visiting his grandfather. And he was out on the farm with his grandfather... He was just a little tyke, maybe five, six years old. He was running around and he was looking at all the farm animals that his grandfather had. He goes over to the chickens and he's watching the chickens and they're scratching and they're eating. And, and he said, they ain't got it. And he ran off and he saw this little colt and the colt was out there playing and just having a good time, you know, just running around, just, just full of joy. And, and the little boy said, he ain't got it either. And the grandfather just continued to watch his son, or his grandson, and the little boy went into the barn, and he saw this old donkey. Face was all drawn, just sad, just kind of moping around. And the little boy yelled at his grandpa, he says, Grandpa, he's got it! He's got it! And his grandpa said, he's got what? He says, Papa, he's got the same religion you do! <laughs> Boy, that hits home, doesn't it? That hits home. Those little ones are watching us, aren't they? We talk about having the joy of the Lord, but yet we walk around looking like we have sucked on a lemon most of our life. This morning, the Lord wants to set you free. This morning, the Lord wants to drop the chains. You have the key. You have access. In fact, this morning, as we get into the Word of God, what does the Bible really say about joy? Where does the foundation, where does, does the source of our joy come from this morning? This morning, if you'll allow me, I'm going to take you to the book of Philippians. In fact, let me just read a couple of verses before we actually dive into it. Paul said this in Philippians verse, or excuse me, chapter 3, verse 1. He says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. In Philippians 4.4 4 is where we'll start our text this morning. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Now, as a trivia question this morning, Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. All right? He's writing to the church of Philippi. The church of Philippi was actually set up and established by Paul, believed to be about his second missionary journey there in the Europe region. 
Uh, this church was known to be a supporter of Paul and a supporter of his ministry. But who can tell me where Paul was where he, when he was writing these letters to the church of Philippi, the book of Philippine. Uh, Phil <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Where was he when he was writing these letters? <laughs> Philippians, where was he writing this to the church of Philippi? Where was Paul located at this time? Trivia question, where is he? He's where? He's in prison. Now how is it that Paul can be in prison writing to the church of Philippi and saying in verse number 4, and he said, it, he said in verse 3 and in verse number, or chapter 3 and chapter 4, he says rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Anybody ever been in prison? Just a visit. Just a visit. Well, some have, right? It's not a pleasant place to be. Now here's what I'm going with this. How many of you are in prison right where you're sitting? Are you with me on that? You're in prison right where you're sitting because you're allowing the pain, you're allowing the hurt, you're allowing all of these chains to keep you bound in your own prison. Paul says no matter where you are, you can have the joy of the Lord in your life. Amen, church? Amen. In fact, he's going to share that with us this morning. In fact, if you would, let's, let's, let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter number 4. And before we even get started, let me go ahead and give you the points, just in case I don't get to all of them, okay? So here they are, very simple, three. Number one, you can, you can have the joy of the Lord in your past. Amen, church? There are things in our past that we're not proud of, things in our past that cause pain, but can God use them, yes or no, for our joy? Yes. yes, He can. In fact, looking to the past with thanksgiving, thanksgiving of where we are today, thanksgiving for the many blessings that God has given us in the past. Many times I'll meet with folks and, and they begin to talk to me about past and past hurts and past feelings. And I like to pause at that moment when they begin to bring me up all those past angers and, and past hurts. And I say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me one thing in your past that was a blessing. And they pause for a moment and they begin to smile. Now, if you allow me this morning, I want you to just close your eyes. Think of something in the past that you can rejoice about. Something that brings you pleasure when you think about it, a blessing that came from God. How many of you just thought of something? Maybe it's that one sitting next to you that brings you pleasure, brings you joy. That's a blessing from God. Go ahead, you can hug her or him, that's all right. Yeah. Hey, listen. And then many of you, if I say, hey, listen, what brings you pain? And then you, you're, 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 the floodgates begin to open up. The reality is this, folks. We can think of our past and we can either bring pain or we can think of our past and we can bring joy. I don't know about you this morning, but I'd like to let go of the chains of the past and think of the joy that God has for me. And then there's the present. How many of you are breathing this morning? Go ahead, let me see your, hand, see your hands. Who's breathing this morning? How many of you are thankful that you're breathing this morning? If you pass out, Devin passed her CPR class. And I'm thankful about that. She can, she can yes, we're, we're, she'll, she'll apply that this morning. I haven't thought of something, I'm not going to say it. So anyway. Present. Thanking God for the present this morning. Yeah, and I wrote in my notes, you're looking at our presence with a confidence in God. How many of you really are trusting God to get us through this day? Amen, church? Amen. Looking at the present. Trusting God for what He can and will do this day. Bringing us through the pain of a life that may even come about today. I got a phone call from a friend this week as I was chatting with him. He's a, he's a retired DEA agent. I, I will not mention his name. He's asked us to be in prayer for him, but in a private note. He doesn't want it on YouTube or anything like that. And uh, we got to talking and he was on his way to Little Beach and he's taking his oldest daughter there. They had the top down and having a good time of fellowship with him and his daughter. And as we were sharing and talking about some things that were coming up and as far as some work and we do some stuff together from time to time, he says, Mark, can I ask you a favor? And I said, yes. He says, would you be in prayer for me about a situation I just found out about this week? And I said, what is it? He says, well, he says, I found out I've got prostate cancer. Now, here's, here's my goal with this. He says, I ain't worried about it. He says, I'm not going to let it spoil my day or spoil my weekend. This is time for me to rejoice and have a good time because he's with his daughters. But how many of us would have said, oh, no, oh, me, it's over? Amen, church? We allow certain circumstances in the present to what? Cause us pain and ruin the day that God's given for us at this very moment. Well, there's the past that we can rejoice in. There's the present that we can rejoice in and have the joy and the confidence in the Lord. And here we go with point number three, and you'll see all this unfold 
in our text this morning, and that's our future. How many believe that we can have joy in our future? Amen. Amen? Amen. Hey, listen, I'm not talking about joy in, in the trivial things of life or in the material things of life. Now, listen, I've got a nice car, and uh, how many of you know that our cars are going to break down one day in the future? Amen? Yeah, we've got this pickup truck sitting out here, and $275 a couple of weeks ago to put new pistons in the, in the calipers, or whatever they do to those things. It froze up, locked up. Susan drove it. I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. No, it wasn't. I'm just kidding, honey. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen, those... Stop. You're going to get me in trouble. Listen. Oh, no. Too late. Too late. Listen. Here, listen. <laughs> I did leave the emergency brake on. That's true. That's true. That's true. We weren't going to get to that part. We're high-fiving back there. All right. Hey, listen, listen. You see what y'all just did? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. Did y'all see what you just did? You laughed. You laughed. <laughs> no. Listen, hey, listen, listen, listen. You had laughter this morning, didn't you? Laughter's good for the soul. Amen. Laughter is good for the soul. Even in the pain, laughter is good for the soul, church. Amen. Listen, so the truck breaks down, who cares? It will not last forever. But my relationship with you will last forever. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is not my F-150 pickup truck. Amen, church? Amen. Oh, it brings a season of happiness, yes or no? Yeah. Amen, church? Amen. Sure it does. The joy of the Lord is my strength. How many believe that we can have joy and the hope and the promise of what God has for us in the future? Amen. Death for us should be a time of rejoicing, church. For those that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, listen, we will miss you on this earth. And I told Susan, when I pass on, because I'm going before her. You're right. <laughs> Actually, I pray that the Lord takes us together when he sounds his trumpet. Amen, church? Well, wouldn't that be just cool to look over and say, Hey, Ma, how you doing as we're rising to the clouds? Amen, church? Wouldn't that be great? Boy, it's great to laugh, isn't it? It's great to have the joy of the Lord. But listen, I told Susan, should I go before you? You propped me up in a corner and you rejoiced. Don't rejoice because of God. You rejoice because where I have gone. Amen, church. Amen. Rejoice for where the Lord has placed me. I got a new home. I got a new body. I've got the promise of an eternal life that will never last. I would never fail. <laughs> Y'all got me so wrapped up this morning, I don't know where I'm going. Boy, it's good to laugh in the church. Isn't it? Amen, church. All right. It will last forever, is what I meant to say. The promise and the hope of a future and the peace and joy that God brings and gives us through His strength. Paul said this again in Philippians 3 before we get to our full context in Philippians 4. He says, Brothers, I don't consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward for what is ahead. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Paul said, hey, listen, it's not about the past. It's not about the heartache. It's not about those things that were painful in my life. It's not about all those things that I did that, that were wrong. Paul says it's reaching for the prize. It's reaching for the goal. It's reaching for the promise that God has given me through Jesus Christ. Amen, church? Amen. Man, that's where the joy is. That's where the joy comes from. Well, in our text, Philippians chapter 4. And we'll pick up at verse number 4. And if you'll allow me, if you'll follow along, I'm going to read in the New American Standard Version this morning, and this is what it says. Verse number 4, chapter 4 of the book of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good, of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, what does it say, church? 
dwell on these things. Hey, listen, I'm going to get to this in just a moment, but just in case I forget to remind you, underline that. Underline where it says, dwell on these things. You know what happens in life? We find all the things that are wrong, and we what? Dwell on those things. What does Paul say? Paul is in prison writing this thank you note, writing this note of encouragement to the church of Philippi. Can you imagine being in prison and Paul says, hey listen, what, whatever goes on in life, think of the good things. Dwell on these things. Let's go on. Right? I don't want to get off on that. Here we go. Finally, brother, in verse number 9, he says, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Hey, listen, what kind of an example are you for the joy of the Lord, church? What kind of example are you? Hey, listen, again, I don't want to get caught on some tangent. We're going to come back to all of this, but I need to pause right here for a moment. I love to be around those who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior with a smile on their face. Amen, church? You know why? Because they are encouraging to me. This young man right here. I'd love to hang with him. Absolutely. Amen. I love to hang. I love to, listen. He don't have two arms, don't have two legs, but I'm gonna tell you what, he's reaching people for Jesus Christ because he has a heart. You think he's dwelling on what he what he's missing? He's dwelling on what he has. That's the guy I want to hang with. Amen, church? How about you? Do people want to hang with you? Paul says, I want you to see Jesus in me. I want you to see that the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what Paul's saying here in this verse. He says, I want you to learn from me. See what I received. I want you to practice this. Verse number 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. And now at last you have rev revived your concern for me. Indeed, you are concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak for want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am. And I'm going to come back to this one. Paul says, I've learned to be content no matter what. How about you, church? How about you? Verse number 12 says, I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. Verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourselves also know, Philippians, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. This is a place where, in prison, Paul is thanking them. In verse 16, he says, For even in Thessalonica you sent a gift more than once for my needs, not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. You know what Paul's saying? Paul's saying, not that I needed the gift or wanted the gift, but I wanted you to receive the blessing from giving the gift. Woo! That's powerful stuff right there. Don't want you to miss that, by the way. But I received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received that which you had sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go back with me to verse number 6. Here we go. Go back to verse number 6. It says, be anxious. What do you think that means, church? What do you think it means? Worry. worry. He says, be anxious for nothing. You know what I wrote outside my Bible on that verse? I wrote, don't worry. Don't worry. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, our joy comes from an inner peace that we can have only in Jesus Christ. Our joy doesn't come from dwelling on our pain. Our joy comes from the inner peace that only comes from Christ. It's accepting and realizing that He is our peace and He is our strength. If we sit around and we worry, as, as I have shared with many folks, worry to me is, in fact, it's taking place right here. It's that rocking. It's being in a rocking chair and expending all of that energy but getting nowhere. We're not going anywhere. We're just spinning our wheels, so to speak. It does nothing for us. We sit in a rocking chair and we do all that work and we get up and we're still in the same place. That's what worry does. Paul says, don't worry. He says, if you have a need, pray about it. Pray about it in thanksgiving. Share that need with others and be in prayer with one another. 
You know what this gentleman was doing this week with me, my friend? He says, hey, listen, I have a need. And I want you to pray about it. I'm not going to worry about it. In fact, he says, you know what? I'm not even going to do anything about this until Thanksgiving, until November. He says, because I'm going to enjoy the time that I have with my family because this is the time that I need to spend with them. When things slow down, this is when I'm going to get this taken care of. Amen, church? We don't need to be worrying about these things. Sometimes we get caught up in the past. In fact, there are some that have, have like Paul, there was Paul who was one. He was one that had persecuted the Christians. Do you think he let his past ruin the ministry that God had for him? Absolutely not. Paul also had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn in the flesh is. Some uh, say that he had maybe a shorter leg than the other. There's all kinds of folks that have some, uh, some idea what the thorn in the flesh Paul had. The reality is, is did he allow the thorn in the flesh to control the outcome of what God had for him? Hey, let me ask you a question. Did this young man have a thorn in the flesh, yes or no? Yes. What could he have done? Nothing. nothing. Just stay in the bed, do nothing. I'm going to tell you what, he can do some things I can't do. Amen. Amen? Amen? How about you this morning? How about you this morning? What are you worrying about? What, what is controlling you today? I put in my notes here, many of us carry around baggage. Carry around the change. Why not let them go? Many of us look at the world through a narrow lens. You know what that means? That means many of us will see life as the glass is half empty rather than the glass being half full. Amen, church? Are you one of those? How do you see life that God's given you? How do you see it right now? Some of you may have already found something wrong with the day. Too hot, too cold, seats, too hard, too soft, right? <laughs> Music's too loud, not loud enough. I mean, I don't know, right? Maybe you've looked at me and said, why don't he have a tie on this morning? He's up on the pulpit. I mean, I, you know, it's amazing when we focus on the wrong things, it messes up the whole day, church. Amen? Amen. Some of you got up this morning and says, it's raining. I can't believe it. What a beautiful day yesterday was, and it's raining today. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry. This morning, church, if you want to write next to your Bible, we're going to do something a little bit later on. Just write, let go. How many this morning are willing to let go? Some of you are just holding on to it and holding on to it. In fact, some of you are really fearful to let go. Because you say, if you let go, then I'm going to lose the memories. This morning, maybe the pain and the baggage that you're carrying in the chains, it's time to let go. It's time to let it go. You see, Paul knew what pain was. Folks, let's again, let's remind ourselves where Paul is. Paul is in prison. Do you know there was a time where, I believe Paul, I think it was Timothy, he was going, and, and, and uh, I forget where it was, he was going to, to, uh, to get Timothy and, and make him a part of uh, the ministry. And as he was in there, and, and Jim, you might remember where it was, but I, I can't picture it right now at the time. Uh, but he was beaten and thrown out. And the rest of the guys said, hey, listen, don't go back in there. And Paul says, no, no, I've got to go back. I've got to go back. Now, many of us, I want to be honest with you, if they had beat me and thrown me out of the city, I said, they don't want me here. I'm out of here. You know? Hey, listen, I'm not a rocket scientist, but that would have probably been a clue, you know? But listen, God had a ministry. And God had something he wanted him to do. And he wasn't going to let a little thing like getting beaten up get him out of there. Amen, church? Hey, listen, you know we have missionaries that are serving on foreign soil today that, you know what? In fact, I think of Jim and Denise, who actually went through a war in Africa. Lost everything. I think of other missionaries. I think of those right here in the United States who are having difficulties and hardships, but yet they're serving the Lord. Because why? Because the joy of the Lord is their strength. They're not looking at what? The circumstance that they're living in. Folks, let it go. Let it go. All right, let's move on. Here we go. Verse number 8. Look at verse number 8. Paul says this, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, now listen to this, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, what does he say, church? I ask you to underline it. Dwell on these things. This is your present. This is your present, church. Listen. This is what God wants you to be. He wants you to dwell on all of these things. What did Paul say? Hey, listen. He said, what's true? Hey, let me tell you something, church. Everything in this book is true. Did you know that? Yes. Amen. Blueprint for life. 
It will tell you everything that you need to know about life. But in order for you to know about it, you got to read it. you got to crack the cover. Susan and I uh, were talking about a grandmother this week who passed away at 98 years old. A great woman of God. And I think, honey, help me out here. She was, she was in the process of reading the Bible through her fourth or fifth time. Her fourth time. How about you, church? Some of us only crack the book when the preacher comes over. There's an old song called Dust on the Bible. I remember walking into a house one time and visiting this couple. And they got, it's kind of cool. They know when the preacher's coming, man. They start putting stuff out, you know. Get the crosses out, get the candles, you know, and put the Bibles out. And, and I looked over and there was, you know, and there was all this big old dust cobwebs on the family Bible. I guess they pulled it out so we better put it on a coffee table. Folks, if I come over, you ain't got to put it on a coffee table, all right? In fact, nine times out of ten, you don't open that big old family Bible anyway, right? That's right. Right. But you ought to have one of these where, like Susan's grandmother, the cover is worn. Why? Because you know that's the truth of life. Paul says, dwell on these things. Look to God, for He is your strength. He says, dwell on the truth of life. He says, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. Hey, listen, I have a TV in my house, a couple of them. And there's some great TV shows I like to watch. I like the Discovery Channel. I like the History Channel. I like the Velocity Channel and the Speed Channel. Those are, cool. the, the, those are cool channels. There are some things I don't watch. In fact, I started watching a movie the other night and I got tired of it. I said, I'm not going to watch this. Why? Because they had me all hyped up. I mean, I just, what happens when we start dwelling on some of these things of life? What happens when we start dwelling on some of these things that are not a good report? What happens when we start dwelling on these things that are not pure? Hey, listen, you know what I call it? Garbage in, garbage out. Amen, Amen church? Garbage in, garbage out. How many of you have ever watched something or been around people that were negative and you became part of that environment? Amen, church? Paul says to dwell on the good things of life. Dwell on the truth. Dwell on those things that are pure and those things that are honorable. Those things that are lovely. Hey, you know what? Susan and I just, uh, we were sharing with a couple the other night. We have these fake, <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you this. Oh, well, it's already out now. Um, we have these fake plants. And they're great. You don't have to water them. Kind of like these right here. You thought they were real, didn't you? Yeah. They're not. All right. Those are, are those real, Ellie? No. Those, those are fake, too. We got rid of the real ones. See how green they are? Yeah. Hey, listen. We got these fake plants hanging up on our porches. And it's amazing to me. Because we got all the other real stuff out in the yard, and the birds love the fake stuff. Because they build mess. I mean, it's a mess all over the place. But let me tell you what's really cool. We got this one that was, that was hanging out on our front porch. It's a little hanging basket plant. It's fake. and Because um, we can't kill it if it's fake. <laughs> so anyway, we go out there, and, and, and there are three little baby birds. And I went out there and looked at them last Sunday. They're gone now. I went out and looked at them last Sunday. And you knew they were getting ready to fly off because they had the little wings, you know. And, and it was just so cool. Now listen, I'm hardcore. I wore one of those things for 27 years. It's kind of hardcore. And I got choked up looking at them little birds because I made sure nobody was looking. <laughs> to me, that's lovely. That's just too cool to me. That's part of God's creation. And I thought, you know, well, we're gone now. That, that means that one mother came and she fed them and took care of them. That was all that squawking we heard outside, you know? And then they flew away. You know, it's amazing when you dwell on the lovely things. It's amazing when you dwell on the great and goodness of God and what He's done. Boy, it just changes your whole outlook. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Paul says, listen, look at what you have. Dwell on the good things of life. He says, if you want real joy, shape and discipline your focus on these things. Paul says, discipline yourself to think of the things that are good. Think of the things that are beautiful. Think of the things that are filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. If you want real joy, then set your mind on the goodness that God's given you for this day and the promise He has for you in the future. Paul said in verse number 10, he continues, he says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have received your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before you had lacked opportunity. Paul was rejoicing. He was in prison, and he was thanking them for how that they had taken care of him. 
You know what I put in my notes here? Even when we're in change, you want to know how to have joy? Be in prayer and thank somebody else. Go help somebody else out. You know what's amazing? When you're helping somebody else out, your problems don't look as big anymore. Amen, church? You want real joy? Find someone who's worse off than you and you start helping them out. You start praying for them. You start taking care of them. All of a sudden, your problems are not problems anymore. You want to find real joy? Be thankful for those around you. Encourage those around you. Love those that are around you. In verse number 11, he says this, now that I, Not that I speak of want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I'm in. Paul said, I, in verse number 12, he says, I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. And I love this verse, church, in verse number 13. It's a famous verse. We use it all the time. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I wear that verse as a mark. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Anytime I get down or disappointed, I realize and understand that God can get me through it if I will trust in Him to do it, church. I can do all things. And that's what Paul is saying here. Paul says, hey, listen, doesn't matter whether I have got everything that life could possibly offer on this earth or whether I'm sitting here in this prison. Paul says, I know how to be content where I'm at because my contentment doesn't come from my circumstance. My contentment comes from the joy and the strength of my Lord. How about you this morning? Are you allowing circumstances to control your life? Or are you allowing the Lord to be your joy and to be your strength. In Psalm 51, 12, it says, Restore to me the joy of our salvation. Maybe this morning you are in pain. Maybe this morning you are having some difficulties in life. The verse says, The joy can come in the morning if we'll rely and we'll trust in Him. This morning I ask you to write down to let go. Well, if I was just to tell you to let go, that doesn't mean anything, does it? Let go, Marty. What do you mean let go? Well, how about this? Why don't you let go and let God? Let go and let God. Turn it over to Him. Put it at the foot of the cross and let Him have it. For you see, His joy can be your strength. He says to cast all our care, all our burdens on Him. For He says His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Church, this morning, how about it? How about getting the strength that He has for you? Isaiah 40, 31 says this. Let those who wait for the Lord will gain a new strength. They will mount up like wings, like eagles' wings. They will run and not grow tired. They will walk and not become weary. You know, an eagle is a very majestic bird. It's an incredible creature. I was sharing with a couple, uh, Susan and I, several years ago, had a chance to go to Alaska. We were down on the Kenai Peninsula, absolutely beautiful. And you would walk outside and the eagles were like pigeons. I mean, they were everywhere. Majestic, awesome birds. And you would see these things soar. In this verse it says, we can soar like eagles, church. We can mount up and have the wings of eagles if we'll trust in the Lord. How many of you want to soar this morning? Amen. How many of you want to get way above the problems? Way above the difficulties in life? And soar like an eagle. But here's what I want to do with you this morning. I'm going to do something really different. I, this morning, thought that we would have a time of getting rid of our sorrows. Trading our sorrows in. We've laughed this morning. We've had a wonderful time. Amen, church? Some of you have laughed at my expense. And that's okay. Amen, church? If I brought you some joy this morning, it was worth everything. But I didn't bring it. God gave it to you. Amen. God gives you the laughter. So this morning, if you get, in fact, if you'll help me out, will you make sure everybody gets one of these? And uh, Larry, if you'll help him out as well. Um, Craig, can I get you? Just make sure everybody gets one. Here's what I want you to do. That little piece of paper says, to have real joy, to have real joy, you've got to be willing to let go and let God. Are you with me? Who needs a pen? Anybody in here need a pen? All right. If you need a pen, I have a whole stack of pens. And Diane, if you'll make sure, if you can help me out. If, if you need a pen, just raise your hand. I want to make sure everybody gets a copy of one of these this morning. Because here's what we're going to do. 
I don't want anybody to leave this place this morning until you got rid of all your pain and all your sorrow and all the mess that you've been letting bog you down, all that baggage. Take the time this morning, just between you and God, and on that little piece of paper, you write down right now, whatever comes to your mind, what's the pain that's causing you not to have joy? What difficulty are you dealing with right now that's causing you pain? Write it down. You're not going to give it to me. You're not going to give it to your neighbor. This is between you and God. Here's what we're going to do with it. Are you ready? Make sure everybody gets a copy of it. We've got plenty of time. All right. Between you and God this morning, Paul said, no matter what condition I'm in, I know how to be content. Why did Paul say that? Because he knew the real strength of his joy comes from God. This morning, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you have the key. You have the key this morning to let the chains go. You have the key this morning to get rid of the baggage. And this is just a simple exercise. Actually, it's a reminder of what we have in Christ. So take that little piece of paper between you and God. Say, all right, Lord, I want the joy that you promised. So right now, I'm writing down, Lord, those things that I can remember. Those things that are causing me pain. Those things that are robbing me of my joy. And here's what we're going to do with them today. It's just an example. It's just an illustration. Write them down. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk right over here. We're going to put it at the foot of the cross. And give it to the Lord. And get rid of it. Get rid of it. Let go of it. Let God have it. Amen, church? Let go of it. So go ahead. Take the time to do that. And if you got something you want to get rid of this morning, go for it. Hey, church. Church. Feels good to let go, doesn't it? Feels good. Again, church, that's, that's just, that's an exercise of faith. An exercise of faith. Paul said, no matter the circumstance, whether in prison or whether I'm there in the church ministering with you, I know how to be content. For my contentment doesn't come from my circumstance. My contentment comes from the joy of the Lord being my strength. Here's what I'd like to do. Right where you're seated. If you just bow your head. I'm going to go over here. And let's have a word of prayer. Father, you were in this service this morning. The Holy Spirit was present. Father, you brought about laughter. And I know for some, Maybe that deep down laughter that come from their very bones was maybe the first time they really laughed. Father, your word says that joy can come in the morning. There are some times in life, Lord, we'll have pain. There are some times in life, Lord, we just want to throw in the towel. We just want to quit. And, oh, Father, I pray that as a body of believers as the body of Christ. When one part of the body is hurting, I pray, Lord, that the other part of the body is there to encourage and to uplift. For, Lord, that part of the body that is doing the encouragement is the part of the body, Lord, that is you that's providing the strength and the joy that we need during that time in our life. Father, in this illustration this morning, in this little trash can right here, several in this house wrote on a piece of paper. And Lord, it was between you and them. And Father, they're praying. As your word says, they're bringing their petitions before you. They're bringing their burden. Those things, Lord, in their life that are causing pain and discomfort. Your word is clear, Lord, that you can give us joy and strength during that time. It's not about the circumstance, Lord. It's about who you are in our life and trusting you. So, Lord, I pray that as they place this in this trash can, 
as they got rid of this baggage this morning, as this illustration shows us, Lord, that we can let go and let you have control. I pray this morning, Lord, that they will let go. I pray this morning that they will let you take care of it, that they will let you walk them through this time in their life, that they will tap into the joy, Lord, tap into the strength that you promised them. Lord, we love you, and Lord, you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. He hung there on a cross, Lord, and he took the pain for us. He took the weight of all of sin for all of humanity, and he buried it through his precious blood so I could be pure and clean before your eyes. So I could come before you now. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this place and doing in these people. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us leave this place, Lord, with the joy of the Lord. Let us leave this place knowing and trusting you to get us through whatever circumstance may come today or tomorrow.